Hello and welcome to the show. For today's Hot Wheels showdown, I've got a car that I think, I think might be able to challenge the Holden Commodore. The Commodore has reigned at the top of the table here for quite some time. If anything stands a chance of knocking it off the top spot, this Shelby Cobra might just be the car to do it. We are going to have big power to weight ratio. In fact, let's face it, it starts off with a pretty damn decent power to rate weight ratio. We can get some very big tyres on the car. There is, I think, a lot of potential in this to go very quick. There is a lot of potential for it to be a difficult car. Let's, let's, let's not forget that. It's still going to be on a 60s chassis, but... Yeah, I think the Cobra does stand a, a good chance of certainly going very quick. Naturally, we will have the car on race compound tyres, as is the rules. We will have three four fives at the back, which is lovely for putting down many hundreds of horsepowers. And we will have two six fives at the front. Not quite so good for getting the front end turned in, but uh, yeah, I'd like a little bit bigger, but could be a lot worse. And the fact they've got such big tyres for rear end, uh, rear end traction will help the Cobra no doubt when it comes to uh, some of these corners. We will also grab some Forza Aero for the car. We want all of the grip that we can get. That is a small concern with the Cobra. While it has been very, very fast in previous builds, in, in, in general racing, you can make these cars incredibly, incredibly quick. Whether it's going to work at the Hot Wheels Showdown course, I, I don't know. Uh, it might not quite be good enough through the corners because, yeah, while it will undoubtedly have the straight line speed and the acceleration, the mid-corner speed, Shelby could struggle, but I don't really know yet. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it'll carry enough speed through the corners they'll be able to make up a huge amount of time when it comes to a straight. I mean, from standard, the engine has 425 horsepower, uh, 500 torque. We will go for, uh, of course, the full-on roll cage. Now, weight reduction. Do we want to go full reduction? Get down to 2,100 pounds. I might just go for the first stage. It's only 6 PI. So if we go for the first stage, we'll get it down to 2,300, and then focus on engine bits and pieces. We should be able to... We shouldn't have any issues getting this car up to the top of... Uh, Top of S1 class with the standard engine. If in doubt, we'll throw a supercharger on and it will uh, probably be... I say we shouldn't have any problem. Maybe we will have problem getting this engine to the top. Um, curious. <laughs> I, I, I was not quite expecting it to uh, struggle so much. Supercharger time it is. It's a little bit of uh, additional weight putting a supercharger on, but we will get uh, more power out of the vehicle. Uh, it's 657 horsepower. Do we really not get this to the top of the class with the standard engine? That seems odd. That would surprise me. I've done all of these bits on the vehicle, done camshaft. Um, okay, that's not really the outcome. It's actually just making no blind bit of difference to the PI, adding 8 horsepower and 9 torque. How bizarre. Um, well, that's a thing that's apparently going on. Let's just check. I haven't done anything stupid with uh, any of these bits, have I? No, gearbox is, gearbox is in. Uh, I guess that might be an adjustable four-speed, and that might be a uh, six-speed gearbox. Uh, I'm not, it, it looks like I'm miss I've got the wrong come by the tyres on or something. That's very peculiar. I say very peculiar. Yeah, I was expecting it to uh, not need 700 horsepower to get it to S1 class, but uh, there we go. Well, I don't have an option for another V8 either, so it's either going to be a V10 or a V12. Um, they are considerably, considerably lighter engines. That is a very, very peculiar one. The, the, the graph is doing odd things. The power band is doing odd things as well. I can't say I've ever seen a car do that. Um, yeah, okay, well... I guess we're going for a, a V10 option. I would put the, um, I would put a V, a V, a product prefer to have a V8 in this, but the, it's just, it's not the choice to do it. Uh, I guess we're going to be running 750 plus horsepower. I mean, yeah, this is probably going to be the faster way of doing it with the, uh, with the vehicle. If I'm honest, the amount of amount of power that we're now getting out of this car for considerably less weight is pretty bloody good going. 
in this. It's going to be a brutal, brutal car in terms of straight line speed. And the thing is, unlike some of the other brutal cars, and we've had vehicles that are slightly lighter than this uh, with a bit more power, the Ferrari 166 springs to mind, but unlike them, this has got the rear tyres to do it. It has got the rear tyres to actually be able to put down the 800 horsepower to the road, whereas the Ferrari didn't. The Ferrari had piddly little rear tyres that uh, spun and spun and then spun some more. So we we stand half a chance. We had to change the engine. However, I I do think this Cobra stands a chance. Might be difficult to get through the corners though. We will have to uh, have to wait and see. So, our Viper engined Cobra is uh, ready to take on the Skyscraper takeoff circuit. It is going to have five laps to try and beat the Holden Commodore's 132.8. Now, that has proved to be a very, very tough benchmark to beat indeed. The Cobra, if it has got the handling, it's got the power, I would imagine. It's whether, whether our snaky hybrid here is going to be able to get through the corners well enough. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. We're asking a lot of a, oh, maybe, mm. okay, we might be in trouble. That's a fair bit of understeer. Now, yet yeah, the tyres are going to warm up. It will get better after the first couple of laps. Oh, but that was a lot more understeer than I would. For, from a car that I might be hoping to challenge the top of the table, I don't want to really be seeing that level of understeer. It doesn't fill you with confidence. It doesn't fill you with confidence at all. Now, admittedly, it was perhaps never likely to handle like the Lotus Esprit, for example. It should have power on its side. Yeah, it's pretty quick, actually. 171 miles an hour. Not the fastest we have seen down there, but not beaten by too many vehicles. Things like the Ferrari 166 still, I don't know, 178 from the Ferrari. Um, now, that did have only a little bit more horsepower than this. It was only just over 900 on that, but it weighed 1,600 pounds. So very, very, very light. I'd hope this might be able to exceed the Ferrari in terms of traction. This should be able to put its power down a lot better than the uh, Ferrari, but uh, maybe around that area, traction not quite such an important, important bit. Uh, okay run around the uh, the loop, 193 I think that was, down to 220-ish, don't think it quite ticked over. Uh, brakes are good on the Shelby, relatively light, relatively big front tyres will help with all of that. We had a slither our way through the first quarter, so that was very, oh, it was very neat through turn two, <laughs> turn two until I tried to get all the power of speed. I'll turn it even sooner through there. That's ah, really, really hurting the speed. We've seen 120 plus miles an hour through that turn three from some of the uh, good handling cars, and this was struggling at 110 to get turned in. Oi, more sliding. There. Manageable slide. We're not breaking sideways, thank God, across the crest. It has got the traction to uh, survive all of that, but still the car is breaking sideways at these corners. How early dare I get on the power? Actually, that was quite. <laughs> I think I could have done a little bit more, and that was quite early itself in getting on the uh, on the power through the crossover point. Don't really want to go down into into second gear. We've got more than enough power actually to fight out of there in third. So much power, we still spun the wheels and almost got into trouble around the horrible tightening radius quarter. Yeah, there's a... <laughs> Tyres were uh, grumbling about that one as I uh, got on the power. Uh, across the leap we go. That really cone gets replaced every time. I just realised, oh, that's not fun. And Snaky Hybrid is going to be a sea snake in a second. Ah. Oh. That's really weird. I say it's a really weird one. We only ever so fractionally twisted, but when you're travelling at 200 miles an hour across a jump, all it takes is the car to be a tiny bit upset on the landing, and you end up on the wall and off into the ocean. Not so good. Not so good for the Cobra. Oh, I slowed down a little bit too much for that final quarter. Annoyed about that. That lap was looking pretty good, actually. A little bit oversteery, but it would have set a interesting time i had to see what we you know there's probably a little bit more in it but uh, yeah as a, as a kind of opening gambit to see where it falls but so oh, that's asking a lot of the cobra <laughs> it's just even with these big rear tires the rear is still letting go through these corners oh that's playing it close 
I'm playing this far too close with all. I'm amazed I got away with that one. I felt for sure that was going in the fence. And yeah, we just can't can't really get the front end turned in to some of these turns with the same vigour that cars like the Esprit have have done. And while yeah, it will out accelerate the Lotus, it's not quick enough, I don't think. It's not quick enough to out accelerate the Lotus. It's not that much quicker than the Commodore in terms of straight line speed. And I think the Holden's better through the corners. I think the Holden is, is just better through these turns, certainly more consistent through these turns than the Shelby. Ah, oh, there we go. We can get on the power nice and early. Well, by no means this is not a bad car, this one, not at all. Let's see if we can not go spiralling off into the uh, scenery. Good run off the pad, actually, there. Uh, 209 miles an hour. Uh, 194 held around the loop. Yeah, not able to join that elusive 200 mile an hour club around the loop. Relatively uh, close, but uh, not that many cars have made it in, let's face it. What are we going to have from this particular lap? It's a 34.5. Need to find a fair bit of time. It's not quite two seconds. A second and a half if we've got to go near the Commodore. I'm not sure I could get that much time. Uh, a 33 might be doable if we don't slide the car. Uh, so much patience. That's such a horrible corner in the Cobra. Yeah, if we don't slide the car around too much, I think we can potentially see it sneak its way into a 33. God damn it, Shelby. Just one lap. One lap go up there with traction, please. That would be nice. Oh got to turn in there with that much now I've got to turn in so early with this car it's uh, a lot of understeer can't decide if it's better or worse than the Alfa Romeo in terms of in some ways it's worse than the Alfa Romeo in terms of understeer because not only do we have the understeer you can still get big oversteer from the vehicle I'm not sure I wanted second through here we'll give it a try now it's still got pretty <laughs> now the tires are up to temperature it's got pretty bloody good traction coming out of that slower slower quarter. I was very aggressive with that uh, second gear and into third and, and so on and it was absolutely okay. I don't think we spun the wheels whatsoever, which is nice. But the issue is, is we're just not getting through the corners fast enough. Oh, are we going to be a little... We are a little bit twisted, but we get away with that one up to 209. It's getting good runs on the boost pad. Which is all, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm a moron. Never say that when there's still another lap to go. <laughs> It's uh, just asking for... Oh, we hit 220 that time round as we barrel into the final corner. Don't end up in the fence. We do spin the wheels. It's only 34-2. That, yeah, we need a couple of tenths. I'm not quite sure where we're going to find a couple of tenths. Probably not out in that wall. It's probably not a fun place to go looking for a couple of tenths of a second. I mean, you want to run it right up to the walls, but not actually kissing them if you can help it. Final time. Final time we go up through turn four. Try and not get that big oversteer. We haven't got the oversteer this time around. To do it, though, I had to have a little bit more of a lift. Now, it's just there's no... It's not enough turning. I say there's no turning. That would be, uh, be unfair to the Cobra. It does get turned into these corners. It's just not quite enough, I think, really, to challenge those top cars. Be as brave as I dare under brakes into this crossover point. Yeah, we can accelerate away. Still, <laughs> still just absolutely mash the throttle. We're flat out in second gear through there and the rear wheels are not braking traction. Trying to be a little bit more patient through that uh, nasty, nasty bugger of a corner up through the gears we go. Across the jump for the final time. Here we go. 200 and oh, a slight a fraction down, 208 miles an hour as we head up around the loop. I was a little bit too tight on the inside, not ideal for the way up, but we are quick on the way down. Big stop into the final corner, try and get the car turn. I'm just waiting for that understeer run across the line. We did sneak it into the 33s, only just though. 33, 8, 6, 1 for the Shelby. There was not too much more left in that car, I'm <laughs> going to be honest. There was not too much more left at all in that one. Basically a second down. Uh, basically a second down on the Holden. I might have expected a little bit more. Into I wasn't quite prepared for as much understeer from this uh, from this vehicle, if I am honest there. Yeah, the traction was nice after the tyres warmed up. And yeah, being able to boot it out of these corners will have helped. Still... 
to get well within a second of the Holden, let's face it, is pretty bloody good. The 33.8 will put the car. It is a... We have another tie. Of course we do. Of course we do. It is a joint 12th place. It equals the time set by, interestingly, the Lexus LFA. A car that gains speed completely differently to the Shelby. The Lexus was absolutely lovely through the corners. Uh, horrendously slow down the straights. The Shelby, the complete opposite. So interesting to see these two have set <laughs> identical. They are very, very much opposites in terms of cars. So, yeah, in interesting, interesting results. Uh, Joint 12th is, is, you know, very, very good going. It beats the Porsche 928, Mercedes 190E, Supra Mark III loses out. Fraction, we are already talking fractions here. It's a busy, busy, crowded table. Uh, fractions, MX-5, Hyundai Genesis, the big three-way tie, the M3, the Legacy, the Elise and so on. I mean, it's only a tenth down on the Lotus Elise and, and whatnot. A couple of tenths down on the Ferrari Testarossa. A good, a good car? A good car around here? Do not get me wrong. I perhaps might have expected, hoped for a, a little bit more speed from the Shelby. It's a little bit too difficult to get through the corners. Just can't quite make it through the uh, turns well enough to make the most of that uh, pretty, pretty brutal acceleration. Not the fastest, but still, yeah, not uh, not too bad. We're just going to do some uh, reverse burnouts, because why not? Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>